Hi everyone. Hope you had a good weekend. So, in the previous uh, session and uh, during our discussion uh, session, what we saw was what will happen if a software is not adequately tested, right? If we don't perform adequate testing, software uh, bugs will go undetected and software may fail. Then what will happen? It will not meet the expected requirements. So, um, now we will uh, see what exactly is software testing. So, how uh, is software testing defined? Uh, you see, uh, software testing and terminologies associated with software testing were all loosely defined until recently, like uh, I think uh, till 1996. No, it was, uh, you know, um, people used to use bug uh, and error and all. You know, they used to interchange and use failure and all. They used to, people used to interchange. But uh, then... Uh, the definitions, uh, everything was standardized by IEEE. Okay, so uh, the based on IEEE 1059 standard, uh, we have software testing definition, which is a process of analyzing a software item to detect the difference between existing and required conditions which is the defects and to evaluate the features of the software item. So this is what uh, the standard definition for software testing is. So if you see in your textbook, you know, there are so many definitions uh, given by various experts in software testing, uh, you can see. But uh, you know, uh, this is a standardized definition. Now we see uh, software testing is partly intuitive but um, you know um, if we ask um, you know in general you know if we ask how a software is tested you people in the previous discussion you told we will be giving input to the uh, software and see the output and uh, we'll give some input and give the uh, and see the uh, output so we will observe the output and see if this is what our required output is right uh, so imagine uh, uh, having um, say add two numbers is the program that you have written okay then in that program if you see uh, there will be like say adding two numbers if you are taking input that ranges from just negative 99 to positive 99 that is the input range that we are considering for our add two numbers uh, part then imagine the number of valid inputs that you will be having because minus 99 to plus 99 there can be any number that you can take from it right so you can enter any of these 199 numbers so adding two numbers means uh, both the uh, both uh, say a and b are the two numbers then a should have one value and b should have another value right so both a and b should be uh, given some uh, input and how exactly um, do we give so uh, if we are giving randomly any input then that is actually equal to um, say 199 uh, to the power of 2 right because 2 inputs which is nothing but 39,601 uh, pairs of numbers that you can give as it so imagine the uh, number of possible test cases that we will have right so if we are just testing these are the just the valid inputs these are just the valid inputs that we should be testing now think about the invalid inputs like what if I am giving uh, alphabets or uh, you know a semicolon and other uh, values as input. What is the expected output that I should get? All that comes into picture right when we are testing. So imagine the number of test cases that we should be doing. So 
basically it is a systematic approach where we will be uh, analyzing and we will be finding out what are the inputs that we should give that will uh, cover or that will adequately test the software okay so a good testing involves it more than running the program and seeing whether it works or not it is more than that we need to have a thorough analysis of the program so that you will be able to test systematically and effectively okay so you see as i told before uh, 39,601 pairs of numbers if you have to give as input. Imagine if you have to perform exhaustive testing. Exhaustive testing means testing all the use cases. Testing all the cases, input cases. It is nearly impossible, right? We cannot achieve it. So, uh, um, uh, Further, you know, we may have uh, user interface testing, then, um, you know, all the other cases. So, it, it is nearly impossible to achieve exhaustive software testing. Uh, so, it is a systematic approach. That is what I want you people to understand from our previous discussion. Okay. Now, why do you think software testing, uh, do you think software testing is hard? Uh, because uh, in your syllabus it is given that why it is so hard. What is software testing? Why is it so hard? Is what is given, right? So why do you think software testing is hard? See, from my point of view, uh, on from the point of view of experts, uh, Testing is basically to show that software performs its functions properly, correctly. And as I told in the previous slide, exhaustive or complete software testing means that every program in the statement, then every path, everything is tested with all possible combination of data. Okay. So that is what exhaustive or complete software testing is, which is nearly impossible so um, so if you see according to various research researches that is happening um, if uh, you are an expert uh, software developer then uh, an expert software developer will um, uh, if you, you know the code written by an expert software developer uh, will have 50 bucks 50 bucks in every thousand lines of code that is what the statistics is and uh, then you know um, that is from the uh, developers side and when we are performing testing you know 15 percent errors in the uh, uh, errors in the uh, software goes undetected it cannot be removed only 85 percent of the errors will be removed by a typical testing process uh, so why we are not able to uh, remove it 100 percent because there are so many practical uh, um, practical hurdles that uh, is there during the software testing process okay uh, in general the, the main aim of software testing is to reduce the bugs but 100% bug removal is not at all possible. It is not possible. We cannot guarantee it. So, um, who do you think tests the software? See, there is, as we know, there is a separate test team. Uh, then we have programmers. So, as a programmer, if I am developing an application, I will first check whether it is working or not, right? Whether uh, according to the specification, what I have developed, am I getting the output? I will check first. Then, I will make sure it is working fine. Then, I will say, I'll say, okay, now this application is done, right? Similarly, uh, so programmers will test. Then we have a test team and then I think you would have heard of beta testing. Um, I don't know if you remember 
but in 2008 2009 when google chrome the browser was released uh, the first beta version was released and beta version basically was uh, you know uh, released to the users who will report back the bugs they encounter so that so basically you know um, users and also if you uh, if you see um, there are so many mobile applications that is not uh, in the play store but uh, is used by uh, users uh, like games and all they users will use and see and give feedback to the developers so they that they that is also another uh, testing process so um, yeah so these are the main people who test the software so uh, defects are hard to find mainly because um, see uh, we can never say that our specifications are right even if we do exhaustive testing in the code we cannot say that specifications are correct right if specifications are not correct or not um, how can we say so if that is not correct then our uh, you know uh, our program may have some error right so one of the major uh, specification errors can result in a wrong design so defects are hard to find in that way because we can never say that uh, our specification is right or our uh, or if there is any design errors right further when can we say that uh, we are done with testing um, that is uh, when can we stop testing so is there any uh, no any uh, way in which we can determine when to stop testing that is in some cases the managers will uh, you know plant bugs and when all the bugs are bugs that are planted is identified then we can say okay we can stop testing or in other another way is you know at some point of time the rate at which or the number of bugs that are getting detected reduces to a minimum then we can then we can say okay we can stop testing but other than that you know there is no hard and fast rule that okay we have to stop testing at this particular point of time nothing like that okay so uh, yeah so if we see yes it is a bit hard uh, to perform software testing moving on what we will see is we will see the evolution of software testing okay in the next video